in the greatest name of Almighty Allah, who is Rahman and Rahim. Welcome back to the Dr. Naps Lectures. In this video, we will talk about how to do the bimanual vaginal examination. Bimanual vaginal examination, it is also referred as the per vaginal or PV examination. It is an internal examination of the vagina. It enables us the assessment of the uterus, assessment of the flopping tube, and assessment of the ovaries. The indication includes the abnormal uterine bleeding, menstruation related problems, pelvic pain, discharge from the vagina, or the abnormal discharge from the vagina, and dyspareunia. Now, how to perform this procedure? After washing the hands, let's introduce yourself to the patient ask the patient identification and explain then about the procedure that what is this procedure and what includes this procedure. You also have to explain to the patient, maybe this procedure is little bit uncomfortable, but I hope that you will not feel any kind of pain in that. Before doing examination, you have to ask from the patient about the bladder, bladder should be uh, MPD because uh, when we do such kind of examination uh, on the patient with the full bladder, it makes the problems in order to palpate the abdominal structures and there should be the presence of one uh, female chefron in this. And also for this kind of a procedure, patient should be lie down on the spine position and legs should be spread apart like this patient is having uh, the lithotomy position especially. After that, we have to put the gloves on our hands and begin by inspecting the external genitalia. First of all, we have to look at the pubic hair distribution. Then we have to look at the libia majora and libia minora. Look for any kind of thickness or swelling at that site. Then we have to look at the clitoris, then the urethral meatus, and the vaginal opening look for any kind of discharge, redness, scars, ulceration or the atrophy. Then we have to ask the patient to strain down our cuff. Then we have to inspect if there is a presence of any vaginal prolapse. Now we have to apply the lubricant gel to the middle and index finger like this. So the middle and index finger should be straight like this, thumb should be abducted and ring and little finger should be flexed towards the palm. Then we have to insert these two finger into the vagina like this. And rotate up to the 90 degree like this. And palpate the walls of vagina. Wall should be moist and slightly wrinkled due to the transverse ridges formed by the vaginal rogues. Now we locate the cervix. Cervix typically pointing downwards within the upper vagina should normally feel smooth and have similar consistency to the tip of the nose. We should assess the mobility of the cervix by gently moving it from side to side. Any tenderness or the excitation while palpating the cervix is basically suggestive to the infection. After that, we have to palpate the furnaces located from each side to side. Our next step is to palpate the pelvic gynecological structures. Start with the uterus. Keeping our index and middle finger of our right hand with the upper vagina, we place the left hand upon the supra pubic region of the patient's abdomen, approximately 4 cm away from the pubic symphysis or the two finger width. We simultaneously place the finger and push the cervix upward. 
we shall able to locate the uterus between our two hands allowing us to palpate and note the features including the shape of the uterus size of the uterus position surface consistency and characteristics especially the presence and absence of tenderness typically antiverted uterus will be easily palpable however the retro vertered uterus may not be easily palpable our next step is to palpate the fallopian tube and ovaries to do this we position our internal index and middle finger in each lateral fornices like this with the pulp of the finger facing anterior surface or the abdominal wall we place our external fingers first over the right iliac fossa then press inward and downward towards the finger of the right hand which are simultaneously pressing upward and laterally to the patient right side this will enable us to palpate the ovaries and the fallopian tube which are collectively referred as the adnexal structures while feeling the adnexal structures note the size mobility shape and the tenderness normally ovaries are oval in shape from and palpable but the fallopian tubes normally are not palpable if it is palpable it shows that it has some kind of the pathology and then we put our hand to the left iliac side or the left iliac fossa and palpate and repeat the same process if during our examination we noted a mass in the uterus or the adnexal structures but we are unsure that whether this mass belongs to the uterus or belongs to the adnexal structure so there is a one tip to differentiate this while doing the bimanual examination when we are pressing up or moving upward the cervix and the uterus if we feel the mass between our two hands like the internal hand and the external hand this indicate that this mass is basically belongs to the uterus but while in case of the adnexal mass we will feel only the mass with our the internal hand to complete our examination we will withdraw our finger from the vagina and begin inspect if there is a presence of any discharge or the blood then inform the patient our examination is completed and provide them tissue to clean up the extra lubricating gel and ask them to read it then in the finally we need to document our finding so this was completely about the bimanual examination or the pv examination i hope that you like this video do subscribe to dr ajam lectures